Hello my loves, welcome back to my channel. Today we are doing the next instalment in my eyeshadow testing series. Hello the Frey, it's okay. They know it's the Freya show, they can see you. They can. I'm currently working on my C palettes. I'm regretting my decision to film at this point. It's 6.35 p.m. Stinking hot here in Perth. I've got new filming lights that I rage purchased and uh, I was thinking like I filmed a bit this morning I was happy with how everything was looking and I thought I'll wait until it gets a little bit darker sun starts to go down there's still daylight but anyway the point is I thought once it starts to cool down it'll be a little bit easier for me to film um, all of these lights generate heat I can literally yeah I can feel it coming off them but I'm still going to film it because I want to, I want this kind of footage, this sort of evening footage, so I can look at it on the computer and decide if it looks good. So you guys are getting your eyeshadow palette video and um, I am, I am going to declutter some eyeshadow palettes. So we're working on C, as I mentioned, and I've broken it up. I'm doing Colourpop in this video. In the next one, it'll be Charlotte Tilbury, and I also have Coloured Rain. Now, I'm not sure if I will do Charlotte Tilbury in its own video, or if I will group it with Coloured Rain. I'm just going to see how I'm going with it. I want to take a little bit of a, a break um, after Christmas, so maybe doing Charlotte Tilbury on its own will kind of be you know it's just it's nice and chill there's only a few palettes but maybe that's a bit boring for you guys you let me know what you would prefer whether I hold off and do Charlotte Tilbury and Coloured Rain together or if I split them up uh, I don't really care either way you guys can decide so we're doing Colourpop let's start with these quads I'm going to put up an image up here in this corner of the eyeshadows before I even start using them I take a photo of all of the palettes and I mark up the ones like the eyeshadow shades that I think I will use and the ones that I don't think I'm going to want to use at all this is a process that I do to prevent myself from even wasting time testing palettes that I don't think I should keep if there's too many eyeshadow colors in the palette that I'm not going to use because I don't like blue or I don't like green or I don't ever wear black. There's no point in me keeping them if that's like 80% of the palette. So first I mark them up. Those images will be up here. The image that goes over here is going to be the palette showing the shades that I did actually test out. Now with these guys, it's pretty easy because I used all of the shades, but Let's get into it. So what I noticed about these palettes is I basically have two color stories four times, essentially. So I've got like a nude color story here and I have like a purpley mauvey color story. So let's start with these guys. I've got Citrus Fizz and I have Cream Soda. They both have two mattes and two shimmers in them and they are both, you know, this sort of... Mm, nudie very wearable um, color story this is I like this color story I know it's boring I don't care I know my eye shape I know my preferences I know what works for me so there's no denying that once you know what colors work for you best and like the tones and color depths it is what it is so Cream Soda is the one with the rosy tone and Citrus Fizz is the one with the goldy tone here, but otherwise they're pretty similar. This one's a peach. This one is also kind of a peach. This is a pinky peach. This is a peachy peach. You've got like matte browns and then like a shimmery shade up the top. I don't want to keep them both, even though I like them both. I've opted to keep Cream Soda simply because I kind of like this colour and this colour the best. I still like Citrus Fizz, it's a nice palette, there's nothing wrong with it, I just don't want to keep two that are so similar. I need a keep pile and I need a declutter pile. Let's move on to Sorbet and Like a Virgo, again, very similar. I'm starting with Sorbet. 
this is a really really beautiful palette again I did use all of the shades that burgundy like burgundy brown so nice and next up I've got like a Virgo um, I again really love this one used all of the shades no issues with it this matte brown if I'm being really super picky and I was because I was like I don't want to I don't want to keep all four I want to get rid of half of them especially when I realized the color stories were the bloody same um, this can be a little bit like annoying to blend a little bit like patchy you've got to layer it blah 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 I really really love this color I think it is beautiful but in the end I decided that sorbet is a bit more up my alley you can see there's kind of like a nudie peachy pink there's a bit of a brighter pink there and then the mattes are definitely more they're just more me although if I could swap some things around with these palettes like if these little pans popped out I would probably take this shade swap it out for the pink and potentially yeah no that's what I'd do I'd take this one swap it out for the pink here and that would be a perfect palette for me I actually really like those little quads from Colourpop they're sturdy I do think the pans are too big just gonna I feel like it was a missed opportunity these could have been like tiny tiny little things um, that literally get lost in your makeup bag and that would be super fun having like half a dozen of them and digging through them but um, I I like them I think Colourpop, oh, I don't know, some people, you know, they, they hate Colourpop eyeshadows, I don't fall into that category, I definitely feel like some are better than others, but that is the case with all eyeshadows from all brands, um, and for the price, I, I think they make good colour stories that are affordable. Okay, let's change things up and move on to something giant. This is the biggest palette that I own from Colourpop. It's Stone Cold Fox. It is gigantic, but the pans are fairly small, which I do like. Um, I feel like, yeah, see, this is why I'm not too sure about filming at night, especially with makeup and stuff. Um, I am going to go through and just, I'm going to just swatch some shades randomly what I found with this is it is very cool toned but also there's enough shades in there that lean kind of neutral that it doesn't feel complete like this one here doesn't feel completely I guess redundant when it comes to the amount of shades in there and the looks that you're creating although I think it is worth pointing out that whenever I created a look with this palette it did always sort of feel like it was a leaning more cool tone and I had I had some control over it like I could um, you know use some of the more neutrally shades to sort of soften things up a bit but um, I always had a cool tone look it, it was just the way that it was however in saying that I love soft cool toned eyeshadows and I think that's what this palette does really well when I initially went into it I thought I'm probably not going to keep this because it's too big and it's too much cool toned I don't remember what shade that was that I swatched I think it was this one yeah um, and I, yeah I just thought this is probably not going to be kept but I spent the most time on it because there's a lot of shades there and I did want to make sure that I was making the right decision now I didn't use all of the shades obviously there's a lot in the palette and I didn't want to be working on it for like a month um, so I mostly just gravitated to the shades that like I know I like and I know they look good on me and I was having a really good time with that I was loving the the looks that I was creating those really soft cool toned slightly neutral look and as I kept going with the palette I realized that there really wasn't a lot in the palette that I didn't want to use it kind of came down to like these three shades here maybe this one here um, 
everything else I just really enjoyed. And then I got to thinking about like desk palettes and you know, I don't own a whole lot of like large palettes anymore. None that are like cohesive, cool tone palettes without being like literally 50 shades of gray. I wasn't having any issues with the formula. I was just like, every time I used it, I was just happy with it. And that's when I decided that I was gonna keep it. When I think about desk palettes, which is, if you're not familiar with what a desk palette is, um, where were you during the beauty news days? Uh, it's basically a palette that is like so big that you like open it like an old school desk. And there's so many shades in there that it's just like analysis paralysis and it makes you want to go back to bed. They, they're usually so big that there's so much going on in them that they, you know, they touch all of the bases. You'll have like blues and greens and purples and yellows and reds and oranges and, you know, browns and neutrals. And it's just like, oh my God, it's like the color wheel threw up in a palette. And I don't want that. Like, I think I've got, Oh, how many big, big palettes do I have? I think I've got one more from Morphe and it's the Jaclyn Hill um, palette just because I like it. I'm not like, shoot me. I don't care. I like it. Um, but I also like this. And what I like about this is it's true to being like a cool tone palette without being overly redundant. And that makes me want to keep it. So I'm keeping it. Let's do these guys. These are the 12 pan palettes. Um, I have whatever here. I hadn't even used this palette. And I have Femme Rosa, which was the Karuchi ColourPop um, collaboration. Uh, this is where things get hard for me because I'm still trying to decide. I don't want to keep both because I feel like I should realistically get rid of one of them. Um, just because, you know, my palette drawer is full and I do eventually want to get to a time in my life where I feel like I don't have so many eyeshadow palettes that I'm allowed to go out and buy one, um, which is a rule that is self-imposed. But my issue is I like them both. I think I do have a preference. Um, let's just go through them. So... The Femme Rosa palette, um, you might be able to tell that, like, if you know me, you probably know I love these matte shades. These matte shades are just everything I always wanted in eyeshadow colours. They are beautiful. That, like, just that alone is so pretty and it makes me so happy. This one's swatched terribly, um, but they're beautiful and I love them. I didn't have any issues with how they apply. I think all of the colors work really nicely together in looks. You can create darker looks with these two here. You can lighten up the look with these two. It's just, I like them. They're, look, I feel like I'm talking myself out of getting rid of this um, because this was the one that I was thinking I would part with, uh, but let's keep going. Um, the shimmers, I think, again, really beautiful. They all, you know, they just work. These last four shades that I've just swatched are the four along the top, and I'm not in love with them. These, like, if the palette was just, how do I get rid of that? If the palette was that, I'd keep it. I, I just would, because it's just such a pretty color story. So it would look like that, and that is, me in a palette. Um, these guys are fine. They just, they're not as exciting as these ones. You know what I'm saying? When we move over to the whatever palette, um, there's a lot more mattes in this palette and I still like the mattes. Um, there's less shimmers. And for me, that's kind of, that's where they sort of, this palette falls flat for me because half the shimmers, I just don't really care for. I'm thinking I want to swatch this one on this arm, but I know it's going to be such a nightmare to do with my non-dominant hand. Hang on, I'm going to I'm going to swatch them and I'll be back cuz I got to 
make sure I'm getting it at the right angle for the camera. Otherwise I get weird swatches. Oh my God, it's a nightmare. Okay, there's the mats, which are definitely not swatched well. I think I still definitely prefer the mats going on here, but as a whole, I think this palette, the whatever palette is simply more, not necessarily cohesive, but maybe just more functional with all of the shades that are in it. This one here that I'm swatching now is a, it's a pressed glitter. So, you know, some people would absolutely hate that, but it sure is pretty. A couple of elbow swatches to finish this palette off. I don't know, what, what happened? Why is this one so... The, they've got the same amount of shades, Hayley. That's what happens when I swatch with my non-dominant hand. Um, since this part of the Femrosa palette is kind of, like, it's redundant to me. Like, I just don't use these shades. I'm essentially not using a third of the palette. But if you look at this palette, like, everything here I use. This shade is, like, it makes my eyes go wonky it's so so pretty so in saying that I feel like it's smarter for me to keep the whatever palette because if I'm using it I'm more likely to use the majority of the shades whereas with the Femme Rosa there is literally a whole row that I'm not going to use and there's a really good chance that these shades here I can maybe not dupe but I can get the same sort of vibes elsewhere in my stash and these shimmers which are the ones that I do really like in the palette again I'm not so in love with them or like I feel like I can let them go because again I can probably dupe that elsewhere in my stash so Femme Rosa goes whatever stays finally I have my nine pan monochrome palettes so I've got Baby Got Peach, Aha uh -huh Honey, Orange You Glad, and Main Squeeze. Now, Main Squeeze is the red one. I figure we may as well chit chat about this straight off the bat. I am going to keep this palette. Just going to swatch a few of the shades for you. As you will know, red is my favorite eyeshadow color. And uh, I personally think that we don't see enough true reds. Um, in eyeshadow palettes, they often pull quite pink. Also, the formula, I feel, is probably pretty hard to um, get smooth and right. Okay, turns out I'm going to swatch this whole palette. Often, what I find is uh, they're, they're very dry, they're going a bit patchy, blah, blah, blah. Um, this is a very red palette done well. Again, without really being redundant, you've got like an orangey red, a pinky red, a true red, you've got a brownie red, a plummy red, and then you've got some shimmery shades um, to like complement. So this one here is uh, a duochrome. There's like warm gold to sort of peachy red, sort of. You've got a beautiful uh, bronze there with red tones, and then you've got like straight up shimmery red. I love this palette. I don't own anything like it. It is not the best formula of red eyeshadows that I've ever tried, but I don't think there's going to be any brands who are bringing out, you know, a banging formula with red eyeshadows all in one palette. Also, the fact that these are little pans, it's sturdy. I can pull it out when I want. Everything's in there. Red looks for days. I'm keeping that one. Moving into Orange You Glad. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get rid of this one either because I don't know if I'll be able to get rid of any of these to be honest. I love orange eyeshadows. I think they are beautiful and they're right up there with if you don't have the brevity to wear red eyeshadows I say go for orange. Um, it's another color story that I think is very flattering on my coloring. Um, I said I wasn't going to swatch all of these, but I think I just will. Again, I love that they've got like different tones of orange. They're different enough that they sort of hold their own in a look. Like they each individually can add something. Like this one here is almost a neon color. 
this one that I swatched is a pressed glitter. So uh, again, I know like people aren't into that. I'm not really too fussed by it. I don't wear them often, but if I want to, then I will. Oh, this one too. Um, Mimosa Mummy. Ridiculous name. Gorgeous shade. Look at it. Just gorgeous. And then we have, of course, a brown that swatches like a piece of crap. But is very complimentary to the rest of the palette and you can see it's still got those orange tones in there. Another one that I feel like I'm not gonna, like I'm not gonna reach for this on a super regular basis, but if I want an orange look, I know that I can come to this palette and I, I've got like a week or two weeks of orange looks in there that I can play with before I get bored. And there's no other palettes in my stash where I can do that. Like, yes, I have orange eyeshadows. Yes, I can pull together an orange eye look, but one thing that I hate is going through like 20 palettes to find a single selection of eyeshadows to create a look when I'm going for a certain vibe. I am much more one of those people who I will choose a palette because of what that particular palette offers. Like it is... It's giving me what I want. So if I'm thinking, right, I want to wear a nude sparkly look, I'm going to go to a palette that I know has a multitude of nude eyeshadows and sparkly eyeshadows. I don't want to dig around in my stash and have 10 eyeshadow palettes or single eyeshadows open on my desk. All right, let's move on to Aha uh -huh Honey. Um, I really like yellow eyeshadow as well. I mean, obviously I do, because that's why I kept the palette in the first place. This is also a gorgeous palette. And I feel like this... Uh, the, look, this is a yellow palette, but I feel like it also kind of leans a little bit earthy with some of its yellow tones, which, uh, I mean, that makes sense, because uh, yellow, I mean... How far can you go with yellow? I'm just gonna swatch these mattes again because I know that they're not really showing up that well and my lights will be washing them out. The shimmery shades, so that one that I just swatched, which is called Dandy, um, they're beautiful, really nice. That one there is a pressed glitter, as you'll be able to tell. And then we start to get into those shades that I feel start to have some earthy tones to them, almost like, a hint of green so that one is Queen Bee oh god it swatches terribly um, I do think that this last shade which is Buzzkill is a bit like baby poop brown with those green tones in it but still I think it, it's relevant I do think that some of the matte shades in this palette kind of feel a t teeny teeny tiny bit redundant however I do have to say that my lights are definitely washing this yellow out quite significantly um, in a way that I don't think it did with the other palettes and that might simply be because they are lighter shades um, and there is diversity in there that maybe you wouldn't be able to see I do not wear yellow eyeshadow enough to justify keeping this palette. I try to think about my eyeshadow collection and how many yellow eyeshadows do I have, and I don't think that I have that many, but also am I really, like I just mentioned earlier, I don't like to pull out 10 palettes. So if I'm looking for an, a yellow eyeshadow, and I probably wouldn't do an all yellow look, I don't know, maybe, but am I really gonna reach for this? So I do like this palette, but I don't love it as much as Orange You Glad and Main Squeeze, which is why I think I will put this one on the chopping block. I have just made that decision now. Um, just seeing it swatched and sort of knowing how I felt swatching these and seeing them all together and then looking at this one, I'm like, realistically, if I'm going to choose, you know, one of these palettes, what am I going to reach for? It's definitely going to be one of these over this. And it would also be this over this. Let's talk about Baby Got Peach. Um, I love peach eyeshadows. 
All right, let's watch it. Um, this is a, I mean, that is a glitter, you can tell. Um, but this palette, I feel, is if pink, orange, and nude had a baby. Now, is that necessarily peach? I don't know. I personally think that peach is a pinkish orange shade and I don't think that they've really nailed that with this palette. There are you know some peachy hints in there but I also feel like a lot of the shades lean a bit more nude or a bit more pink. However in saying that I love this palette and of all of these nine pan palettes when I was testing them out I actually felt like this was the most wearable on any average day and this is something that I would travel with like unless I was going to I felt like this palette was uh, a bit more wearable than like orangey glad or main squeeze and look I will wear these because I love them and I, I do wear red eyeshadow and I do wear orange eyeshadow and I like I wear you know monochrome looks with those colors but on like an any day basis when I'm just picking out eyeshadows to wear this feels so much more in line with the standard types of eyeshadows that I reach for so the nude shadows and all that stuff um, I think it's really pretty it's quite feminine it's like summery and I can see myself using this one a lot more so I'm going to keep Baby Got Peach. I started this project with 90 palettes and a total of 884 pans in all of the eyeshadow palettes. Um, I will mention that number might be off. I'm working it out as I go. That's just kind of what was on my inventory. So far I've tested 24 palettes. I've decluttered 9. So that leaves me with 81 palettes uh, left. Some of them to work on, some of them I'm keeping. And that leaves me with a total of 787 pans of eyeshadow, which is just so much. It's ridiculous. I've only got two eyes and not an infinite amount of days to wear those eyeshadows. I wonder how long it would take someone to pan 787 eyeshadows if they wore eyeshadow every single day. I would like to know the answer to that. But it's not something that I'm willing to test out myself. So I'm going to leave that there, guys. So feel free to chime in. Let me know your thoughts on ColourPop eyeshadows. Like, are you a fan? Are you sort of in the middle? Do you not like them? Why? Why not? I want to say a massive thank you to my channel members. I appreciate you guys so much. And I will be back, uh, well, I'll be back tomorrow with another video because it's vlog mess. Uh, but I'll be back with the next installment of this series maybe in January, maybe in February. You guys let me know if you want Charlotte Tilbury on its own, just like a little quiet, chill, short video, or if you prefer the longer videos, because then I will, well, I take longer to test everything out, but um, I will do Coloured Rain in that video as well. You guys let me know what you want. Thanks so much for joining me today, guys. I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Mm-hmm.